I have yet another story, an unfortunate story from Bangladesh for you, just to catch you up. We've covered in the last year a number of these uh, incredibly violent hackings to death of a variety of non-religious and rationalist and pro-science thinkers in Bangladesh. Just to give you a, a, a summary of a few of them, I will put up a list for you here. Uh, Dr. Avijit Roy hacked to death by assailants with cleavers. Oyasakur Rahman hacked to death by extremists with cleavers in Bangladesh. Secular blogger Ananta Bijoy Das hacked to death by extremists with cleavers. Science and Rationalist Association of India organizer Niloy Chatterjee was decapitated in his home. Hands were cut off. 43-year-old Faisal Aragin Deepan found dead in his office. And more recently, 28-year-old Nazimuddin Samad hacked to death for supposedly, quote, promoting atheism. And 58-year-old professor Rezaul Karim Siddiqui hacked to death as well. And unfortunately, Lewis, it has now gotten even worse. The body of a 75-year-old Buddhist monk has been found hacked to death in the district of Bandarban, inside of a Buddhist temple, police say that his killing follows the murder of two prominent gay activists, a law student and a university professor just last month. And in February, a Hindu priest was beheaded in northern Bangladesh. The situation in Bangladesh really warrants deeper understanding than it's usually moderate, but extremists are taking over. We sort of hear two sides on this story from people, Lewis. On the one hand, uh, from people like Reza Aslan, we hear Bangladesh is just so moderate, period, full stop, no more analysis uh, necessary. From others, we hear Bangladesh is just a, it, it's, it's a disaster of Muslim extremism like any other incredibly uh, extreme Muslim state. And the reality is is much more in the middle. In 1972, the constitution of Bangladesh actually listed secularism as one of four founding principles but it was eventually removed in 1977 and it was replaced by a statement of quote absolute trust and faith in almighty Allah and Islam was then declared the state religion in 1988. This is all to say that secularism and reason were forces in Bangladesh which were slowly eroded and replaced over time until in 2010 the Supreme Court restored secularism as a sort of basic tenet of the Constitution and the Supreme Court also strengthened its stance against punishments by uh, fatwa, which we've talked about after complaints of brutal sentences being carried out against women by these extra legal village courts. So you have a country with significant extremist elements, but also historically has had many reformers, free thinkers, atheists. So it also has many targets for extremism. It is true, Lewis, to say that on paper, Bangladesh is more moderate in terms of Muslim countries. They have no law against apostasy, for example. They have, uh, uh, which is the leaving of Islam. Yeah, but, but they have. Yes. you may still be charged for insulting Islam. That's right. So, so it is a complex uh, situation. We can't just write it off as these are totally anomalous. Uh, instances that have nothing to do with the uh, situation in the government and law at large. But we also should recognize that on paper, Bangladesh has been a country of reformers. It's no coincidence that there are so many rationalists and atheists and free thinkers in Bangladesh. Uh, there are plenty. And um, I, I don't think the government is doing enough. I don't think we're hearing enough from them about this, and it's it really has become an epidemic. Yeah. So uh, they need to act on this, and uh, their inaction, I think, is very telling. Absolutely. Officially, Bangladesh is part of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which is designed to sort of ensure that there is true freedom of religion and expression. Because as you know, Lewis, freedom of expression doesn't mean you can say whatever you want, but you risk being hacked to death and the government basically taking no action. That's not really the type of freedom of religion and expression that we're talking about. So the government in Bangladesh does need to be absolutely more proactive. We have seen widespread attacks against atheists, against Hindus. We now have a Buddhist. It is very complex on paper. The bottom line is we have to encourage, we have to demand that the Bangladeshi government take a more forceful stand on this.